Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So there is a new version of Emulec available now, and it's called Emulec 4.0. And if you're not familiar with Emulec, it's basically a firmware that you can run on any number of boxes, including some handhelds, which include the Odroid Go Advance, as well as the Odroid Go Super. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you all the cool things that are involved in Emulec 4.0, so that you can decide whether or not you wanna install this on your own device. So without any further delay, let's just jump into it. Now to go ahead and get started, all you have to do is go to the link to the GitHub page that I'll have in my video description below, and then click on the code page, and then go to releases. From there, you can read a little bit about 4.0 and you can see some of the features that have been added. For example, this now runs on a 64-bit architecture. There's a brand new default theme made specifically for MUELEC. And probably my favorite feature is that it has a new partition for your SD card. And this will be a FAT32 partition, which will allow you to drag and drop games from a Windows PC or a Mac computer. So that's super handy, so you don't have to FTP your files over, so it's going to be a lot faster. So to download it, you go down to the Assets section, then find the Odroid Go Advanced image file, and then just go ahead and download that. It'll be about 650 megs altogether. And I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again. So once you've downloaded it, go ahead and unzip the file so that you have the image file. And there you go, that's the image file that we're going to flash onto an SD card. To do this, we're going to use an app called Win32 Disk Imager. So after you've opened that up, you just go ahead and click on the folder icon, find that image file, and then open it up. And then if you had an SD card in there, it would show up under device, and then you hit the right button. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again, but that's the process you would go through when you're first flashing it. After it's done flashing, you can go ahead and eject the SD card and put it into your device. It'll take a minute, it's going to resize your partitions, and then it'll reset itself, and then you'll be in. So when you first get into Emulec, it's not going to have anything loaded, because there's no games or anything on it yet, but I'm just going to show you a little bit about the menu. Now to get into the main menu, you're going to push the button that's to the right of the screen there. It's basically where a start button would be, but it's not labeled on the Odroid Go Super. Within here, you can see all the different options that you have available to you. So one of the first things I wanted to do was check out how the Wi-Fi networks work on this firmware. And I recently bought this TP-Link AC600 Wi-Fi adapter because this can also do a 5 gigahertz network, which is compatible with Odrego Super. Now this didn't work for me with the Retro Arena firmware, but as you can see here, it works just fine under Emulec. So that's pretty cool. I now have a 5 gigahertz connection for my Wi-Fi on the Odrego Super. So one thing I did want to check out are the different ports that are available on this new Emulec 4.0. And as you can see, there are 22 games that are loaded on here. Now these don't have the retail files, so you still need to add those in here, but at least it has the shell so that you can add the retail files and play each of these games. And a lot of these are the standard ports that you see on a lot of these devices, but I'm actually pretty excited about seeing Sonic 1 and 2 and Sonic CD. My understanding is you can take those Android apps and then you can extract the game files from them and then you can insert them into this and then you'll have these native running ports of those Sonic games. So that's pretty cool. So since I already have the Wi-Fi set up for my device, I'm going to go into the setup menu and I'm going to select install drastic. This is going to pull the drastic emulator from the internet and install it onto my device. All right, so let's actually take advantage of this FAT32 partition and start moving some ROMs over. And it's really easy. Once you plug in your SD card, you're going to get two folders popping up. One is going to be the EE ROMs folder, which is where you're going to put all your ROMs. And the other one's called Emulec. Don't even worry about that partition. Just worry about the EE ROMs one. So if you're not sure where to actually put all of your game files, there's a wiki page for the Emulec. And you can go over to the right here and you can see supported emulators and ports. And here you can see the name of every system, every emulator it takes advantage of, what the name of the folder is, as well as what file extensions it accepts as well. So all I have to do is find the appropriate folder and then make sure that the ROMs that you add are the appropriate file extension. It's a very simple process, but sometimes people get mixed up of where to put what. As you can see here, I've added a bunch of Game Boy Advance games and they are GBA files. And you can see here that that's an accepted file extension. Now, another piece of the puzzle are your BIOS files, and that's also included in Emulex, so you can check those as well. So you just go back up to this wiki and then right underneath the emulator section that you'll see that there is a BIOS section. Go into here and you'll find every system that requires a BIOS or has optional BIOS files and what the name of those files need to be. So then make sure you get that BIOS file and then add it to the BIOS folder on this SD card. I'm not going to show you how to do that because BIOS files are copyrighted, but that's how you would do it. 
Once you've loaded all your games, you can just go ahead and eject the SD card and put it back into your device. Okay, so here we are with a loaded SD card for our device. Now at the time of filming this, the Screen Scraper app was down, so I was not able to scrape all of my box arts and whatnot, but you can see here, this is what it'll look like. And I think it looks very nice in this five inch Odroid Go Super screen here. Okay, so let's just jump into the hard stuff and see how that works. We're gonna start with PlayStation Portable and let's try a God of War game. Okay, so getting into the settings here, I'm noticing that the patch has been applied that is also in ArcOS and 351 Elect that came from the Batacera firmware. That's a really good thing because it has the max FPS patch because that allows you to cap the limit of the frames per second on the game, which will make some games run faster, especially with God of War. And then I'm gonna take the resolution down to just one of one. But as you can see, as I'm playing here, it actually doesn't look very good. It's not playing very well at all. So I think there's still some work to be done on this emulator. I'm gonna have to play around with the settings and see if I can get anything better. But as it stands right now, just these couple little tweaks here did not provide me with great PSP performance, at least on God of War. As you can see here with Ridge Racer, it's running just fine. One of the things about this specific PSP emulator patch is that it requires you to cache a lot of the graphics files as you're playing. So for example, here with Ridge Racer, I'm playing the third lap, which means it's already cached this course twice now when I'm playing it. And that's why it's running so smoothly is because in particular for racing games, it's gonna run really well because it already will cache everything during that first lap. So not every game's gonna play as smoothly as this, but Ridge Racer is a great example of how that takes advantage of the caching. Moving on to Dreamcast, performance was pretty good. So for example, here with Dead or Alive 2, everything looks really good. Now there's a frame skip of one on here, so it's a little bit jerky feeling, but overall, I'm actually pretty impressed by how this is all playing. And as you can see with Soul Calibur here on the Dreamcast as well, it's playing very nicely. It's nice and smooth. A lot of the times this game has graphical glitches when you play it on other devices or with other firmwares, but in this one it's running really well and I'm not seeing any glitches. Now testing Nintendo DS, I came up with a challenge. The buttons were not correctly mapped. And I'm sure this is gonna get fixed in a future update, but at least for now, I was not able to use any of the buttons for the Nintendo DS. So I ended up going on Discord and just kind of checking out and seeing what kind of fixes there were available. And what I found is that you have to plug in a USB keyboard in order to actually navigate the menus and then you can assign the buttons. So you can see here, I have a little keyboard dongle that's attached to my Odrego Super and I'm using a keyboard here to move the menu up and down and then I'm using it to assign buttons on the device itself. And I only had to do this one time. Once I was done with it, I could navigate everything using the device. But it was kind of a pain, especially if you don't have a USB compatible keyboard on you. But after everything was said and done, everything was running smoothly. So let me show you how to actually assign emulators to specific systems because this can get a little bit tricky, especially for arcade games. So for example, in my arcade folder, I've loaded a bunch of Final Burn Neo games. So I need to go into the main menu by pressing start. Then I need to go into game settings. And then near the bottom, you're gonna find per system advanced configuration. Go ahead and select that and then pick whichever folder you wanna work on. So for me, I'm gonna work on the arcade folder. And then under emulator, I'm gonna pick the one I wanna use, which for me is Final Burn Neo. And then after you back out, now every game is gonna launch with the Final Burn Neo emulator. So after that, everything will be compatible. My ROM set is based on Final Burn Neo and then the emulator is Final Burn Neo. So everything's gonna run smoothly. And you can see here with Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, it's playing very smoothly. It actually looks very nice on this five inch screen. And I appreciate the fact that they have like five or six different arcade emulators because you can really choose which ones you wanna play for your specific systems or even by game if you want. So same thing here with MAME. I like to use the MAME 2003 Plus ROM set because it works really well with low powered devices like the Odrego Super. So I'm gonna go into the same thing per system advanced configuration and I'm gonna change the emulator now to MAME 2003 Plus. And as you can see here, the games are running really well. The trick with any arcade emulation is to make sure your ROM set matches the emulator. And so for me, with MAME 2003 Plus, I'm using the MAME 2003 Plus emulator and everything's running smoothly. So while we're playing with MAME, let's go ahead and check out vertical gaming on the Odrego Super. So you can see here, when I start up a vertical game, it shows horizontally, but you can change that in the RetroArch settings. So go ahead and press the bottom function keys on the bottom corners of the device, and that's gonna start you into the RetroArch quick menu. So then go into the options section and here you can do all sorts of things. So for example, you can select skip disclaimer. So you won't see that disclaimer every time you start up a game. That's really handy. But the option we really wanna find is called Tate mode or Tate mode rotation. 
just go ahead and turn that one on. You'll need to restart your course, so you'll want to close the game out and then start the game up again. So I'm just going to select close content, then I'm going to go over to my history and I'm going to start the game up again. So there you go, now you can play it vertically. The thing is, the controls don't work, so we need to adjust that first. So we're going to go back into the RetroArch menu. And this time we're going to select the controls section. Within here, select port 1 controls, change the analog to digital type to right analog, and then you want to adjust all your D-pad functions as if you were using your right analog stick as in vertical mode. So for example, up is going to be right, down is going to be left, left is going to be up, and then right is going to be down. The easiest way to do this is just to visualize the D-pad on its end. So once you're done with that, go ahead and select Save Game Remap File. That means every time you start up this game, not only is it going to be vertically oriented, but you're also going to be able to use these buttons correctly. And you can see me here playing, everything's working great. Now admittedly, using a big screen like this to play vertical gaming is a little bit clunky. I think it's a little bit more natural feeling on an RG351P, which has a 3.5 inch screen. But overall, it still plays pretty cool, and it looks beautiful on a big screen like this. Okay, so let's test out some Nintendo 64 emulation here. So you can see here the default emulator for Nintendo 64 is Mupin 64 Plus. And if you go into options, it's already been upscaled to 640x480, which I appreciate. It means it's going to look really good on this device. But as you can see, as I'm playing here, it's actually quite slow. It's running at only 23 frames per second. And to me, this is too slow to be playable on a game like this. So our solution here is to try out the other emulators that are available and see if they run any faster for this particular game. So you want to highlight F0 in the main menu, and then you're going to hit the select button to bring up the game specific menu options. Then within here, go down to the game options section, and then advanced game options, and then emulator, and then change it to whatever emulator we want to try. We're going to try it with parallel N64 here. And look at that, look at how much better this is playing now. Now not every Nintendo 64 game is going to play well with Parallel, but some will, and so you're going to want to have to experiment and figure out which one works better for you. Either it's going to be Mupin 64 Plus, or it's going to be the Parallel emulator. Now one interesting thing is that other Odroid Go Advanced clones also can run this emulator. So all I've done right here is taken the SD card out of my Odroid Go Super and put it in the RGB20 here. And as you can see, everything's working perfectly. Now the RGB20 is actually not officially supported. This is only made for the Odroid Go Advance and the Odroid Go Super. It just so happens that these devices can also play this firmware. So if you try to go onto the Emulec Discord and ask for help with this device, they're not going to help you because it's not officially supported. But as you can see here, all the buttons work correctly and everything. It's pretty amazing that you're just able to swap SD cards across entirely different devices like this. And the same thing goes with my RGB10, and you can probably notice here that I'm using a different shell for my device, and that's because I swapped it out using a hardware mod. And I recorded it, and I'll release the video this coming weekend, but it was a really exciting thing to have now a metal RGB10 that I put together myself. But yeah, long story short, your RGB10, your RK2020, your RGB20, all of these devices are going to run Emulec just fine. They're just not going to be officially supported. Now one interesting thing is trying to install Emulec 4.0 in an RG351 device. As you can see here, it runs just fine on my RG351P. The problem here is that the rumble will not stop, so it's just going to play rumbling the entire time. So you can probably play it for a couple minutes, you know, you can configure your gamepad and maybe go through the menus, but it's not fun to hold because the thing is just vibrating and shaking at you, it's like angry at you. So unfortunately you're not going to be able to use Emulec 4.0 on this device just yet. They need to do a kernel change first. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a really quick overview of Emulec 4.0 so that you can kind of see how this works. I really enjoy this firmware. I think it's a nice self-contained firmware and a lot of it has been streamlined and really easy for users to navigate with. So if you have an Odroid Go Advance or your Odroid Go Super and you're not really sure which firmware to pick up, this is an exciting option for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!